everyone, welcome to Crotal Flick. My name is Chad Bradle, and today I'd like to introduce to you the Origami camera system. Looks pretty simple, right? Well, this would be the base of it. A very specific quick release plate, two friction arms, two metal threaded handles. Now, there's more to this, which will also be a third friction arm with another metal handle, a gimbal style handle that I built, and three roller blades with threads sticking through them. With all of those together, this device can be folded into a fig rig, a shoulder rig, a regular shoulder rig, a dual shoulder rig. It can be turned into a table dolly. You could even use it as a slider onto like DIY tracks or even a flat board or something. And with the gimbal, it could be used as a steady cam, which I think combined, I don't think there is anything that can do all of that at all. I think this is like the only one that can do that. Now, what makes this great is how simple and professional it looks. It's basically made of mostly camera accessories. And because it's made of camera accessories, if there's something you didn't like about it after you build it, you got a bunch of camera accessories that you'll probably end up using anyways. So you, it's hard to lose with this. Now, there's also a really good chance that you may even have a lot of these accessories, which will take out half the expense anyways. Now, to really get into it, let's go over basically the brain you could say or the main component of all of this that makes it possible and that is the Giatos MH621 quick release plate. What's so special about this plate is that it has two threaded points on it that are right across from each other. One is a quarter inch thread and the other is a 3 8 thread but using a quarter inch two 3 8 thread adapter, I was able to thread that in and then thread the friction arm in through this side. Now both of these are completely attached with red Loctite, which keeps them in place so they're not going anywhere. You'd have to really want to get it off, which, I mean, if you want to get it off and you want to get it apart so you can use them as accessories later on for whatever reason, you're going to be able to. It's going to be tough, but you're going to be able to. So, with that all being said, how about I run through some configurations that you can put this in and then I will show you. But in between, I'll just fast forward the video so you're not watching me fold up a bunch of stuff. So with the two friction arms in place, let's start with the first one, which is going to be the fig rig configuration. And there you have it basically a fig rig setup. You got your handles way out wide and you can get those nice shots. This is a configuration I used for one of my shorts and it worked out fantastic. Now if you're wondering how much weight this can take, I use this with a Canon T3i with my kit lens and I've used it with my Sigma 17-70 to lens which is actually a, quite a bulky lens and it does a really great job as well haven't had any issues with it. You can really crank these handles down as hard as you want really and it's not going to go anywhere and if you really want to, if you're really worried about weight, if you think about how you adjust these handles, if you adjusted it so this handle is like this, there's no way for this particular elbow to do any bending. So if you folded it right across so it's on top of itself like that, it's not going to be able to bend right here. Setup number one, big rig. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is a mini shoulder rig where you have a point that presses against your shoulder right here and you got your handle out front. So you can easily maneuver around and you can even grab onto this knob and give it some support along the side. Makes it a great smaller version of a shoulder rig if you only wanna bring 
the bare minimum. Something else that works great with this is because you have a quarter inch thread and a 3 8 thread on the bottom, you could actually thread this into a monopod and give yourself even steadier shots by just resting it on, having the handles out wide or however, and then you can just easily move around and give it great stabilization that way. So let's go ahead and get into the three friction arm configuration. Now I'm just gonna take a minute to let you know that when you're putting the third friction arm in, you're gonna want like kind of like this elbow right here, and you're gonna wanna give it a good torque turn. So when you turn it, it really snugs itself, snugs itself down, and it's less likely to come undone at this point. Let's continue. Here we have a dual shoulder rig configuration where two points are resting on each shoulder. This adds great stability and I actually kind of prefer this over the standard one point on contact with your shoulder and then using two hands out here simply because I can so easily support the weight of the camera with this arm and then using my elbow bringing it into my body and then I can control the focus or if you have some type of fo focus puller whatever you can do it however you want this is just another setup so let's go with the uh, standard shoulder rig configuration and there you have it two handles out wide and in front one point of contact on your shoulder and you have yourself a little shoulder rig now let's move on to the table dolly we're gonna end up removing the handles to put the wheels on. Now there is quarter inch threaded holes on the bottom of these. So if you really wanted a wide dolly stance, you could do that. But for this, I'm going to take them off. And here is one of the positions. I mean, you could really form this in any position, any position that you want. You can make it tall. You could bring these front wheels way out. And then this one way out if you wanted like a really low shot. Um, maybe you got to squeeze through like a, like a gap between a building or something. You could do that. But essentially, I mean, use your imagination. You can put this in any formation you want. I would say when you're setting it up, it's good to have a flat surface to kind of adjust the wheel, set it on it, and move it back and forth and make sure you're getting your nice straight shot. Um, that's obviously important. Now, because of this, you can obviously get basically any shot you want. You can adjust the back wheel so you can basically pivot off the front and go completely in like a perfect 360 degree angle. If you make like a little DIY track for a slider, you can use this as your slider running in the rails. I believe uh, the frugal filmmaker made a trolley dolly, I think it was called, and he used a couple tracks. And there's no reason you couldn't adjust this to set right on there. Just making sure that your back tire comes at an angle to where your camera rests in like this particular triangular zone here so the weight is right there and you'll be all set easy peasy but i love this as this little setup right here i can take this and adjust the wheels so my camera's almost pointing straight down i can roll it right over top of things almost completely depending on how small they are it's amazing now onto the finale. Now I'm gonna pause real quick. This is the gimbal that goes to this that I showed you earlier. And on the end of it, I am using one of those adapters, the 3 8 to quarter inch adapter on the end. Uh, in a later video, I'll show you how to build this gimbal, but for now, you know, let's just stick with the uh, rundown, shall we? But basically, with the 3 8 we're going to be threading right into the 3 8 hole. You probably want to use a 
small pair of needle nose pliers to get this tight. And once you get it in there, you can adjust these to arrange the legs in a steady cam format that just doesn't exist. Now, I will say that to get this steady cam to work, it's quite the, as I think I've said before, an organic way of balancing it. Unless you can figure out a nice clever system for remembering how you bent all the elbows for your steady cam setup, you'll basically have to arrange things so that it balances. But that's it, right there. Get your camera on there, and then you essentially can just keep moving the legs a little bit up, and a little bit out, and a little bit wider, and a little bit narrower, until you get the nice balance that you so desire, and you can do your nice little swing it around, you know, alignment test as you will. But yeah, that'll be what your steady cam will probably end up looking like. You could arrange the legs in a different pattern. You know, they could come close together and come way underneath. And you could even attach the third friction arm leg if you really uh, have to. But honestly, I was able to put my T3i right on top of here with the kit lens. And that's how I ran my setup. And what's cool about this is, this, <laughs> once again... Probably is the only manually operated steady cam slash glide cam uh, that you can build or get where you could hold it perfectly above your head and get a 360 degree shot because there's no bars obstructing your arm. So that's something to think about. But yeah, hopefully you like this build. I love it. I think it's handy. I can collapse everything down into a small bag and I have a whole bunch of tools that I can use and I find it really helpful. It's honestly the best thing I've ever made and it might be the best thing that you'll ever own. But that's for you to decide and I'd love to hear about it if you build one. Hopefully you like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, any further videos regarding this, I'll make sure I have them up, especially uh, with a little gimbal here, which a lot of you have probably built, but I'll put the, uh, when I make the video, or worst case scenario, I at least create something simple and I talk about the parts that I use for it. And then I'll go over pretty much what I use to make the wheels. Honestly, if I could do something a little differently, I'd have some knobs on here and then I wouldn't need a screwdriver to put these on and that would make it uh, super clever. All right, well, this is the Origami camera system. Thanks for watching. Take care.